Hello viewer, Keith can't come to the shed at the moment, so I'll sing you a song. I dreamed a dream. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I don't know who let her out. Anyway, here's the introduction. Hi everybody, welcome back to 54A. Today I'm going to attempt my first segmented bowl. I'm going to keep things as simple as possible because it's the first one I'll have ever attempted. So there's not going to be any fancy patterns on it, maybe just a couple of layers of different coloured wood and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. This will be the first time I've used the mitre sled that I made a few weeks ago and uh, it'll be an interesting experiment. I'm going to get the camera reset to show you how I'm marking things up and uh, we'll carry on from there. Okay, the bowl I'm going to make is uh, just going to be a straight sided one, um, about six inches in diameter, uh, three or so inches high. Now what I've done is marked on this piece of paper center line and off each line because I'm doing 10 segments each line here is 36 degrees that gives me the 10 segments um, 3 inches out and a mark on one line and 3 inches out and a mark on another line if you then measure from those two points it's the fraction over an inch and three quarters I'm going to do mine at two inches just to be on the safe side that gives you the outer length of the segment you're going to cut uh, for each ring I need ten of these um, I've got some wood some oak American oak is quite a light colour. There it is. Um, I'm going to cut this up on the mitre saw. Now I can't stress too much the accuracy you've got to have when you're attempting something like this. It's no good being half a degree out because by the time you've cut two angles on each segment you're going to be 10 degrees out and that's a lot to try and put right. A fraction you can put up with, it can be sanded, but no more. Um, I got myself some digital calipers um, and I have run a few pieces of scrap through just to make sure that the angle I've set when I made this monitor saw is right and it's about as right as I can get it. So I'm going to run a few pieces now through the saw and uh, we'll take it from there. Well, there's my first 10 pieces that'll make a circle hopefully so the next thing to do glue all these up and uh, put them in a clamp now I'm using these hose clamps get them from any DIY store everybody must have seen these um, and the good thing is if you buy the biggest ones you can get they're nowhere near big enough but you can join two together or three together however many you need for however big a job you're going to do. So I'm going to carry on now and glue these up, get them in the clamp and uh, I'll see you later. Now 
tight, the old tight bond. Make sure you get your glue over every part of that end. Get the second piece. that out of the way. Push them together and slide them a little bit and they soon grip. Believe me, it doesn't take long. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. There you go, a little press down, make sure it's as level as you can possibly get it. Because the more level you get this in the first place, the less sanding you've got to do afterwards. Take it off the paper now, otherwise it will dry to it, it's already starting. There you go, that's the ring. I'm going to leave that for a few hours, I might even leave it till tomorrow to set. Um, it's no good rushing this stuff, it's got to be set properly. So that's about it. Um, I'll continue with another three rings. Um, the base I'm going to use, I found this on my shelf, I must have made something out of it, I can't remember what, or practicing with it. I've already got a tenon on it, so that will go in the jaws of my chuck. Uh, there's a big lump on this side which I'll just flatten off and I'm going to use this as the base and uh, the reason I'm going to use that as the base is it's a perfect fit so no worries there, even less turning to do <laughs> okay then I'll see you later, bye for now just a quick addition about the uh, mitre sled really pleased with that, I mean uh, it's the first time I've cut some anyway a slight adjustment to it underneath if you can see that I've put a thin, very thin strip about a millimetre th thick of wood just one each side of that runner, one each side of that runner bit of carnauba wax and rubbed it and it glides 
absolutely at the touch of a finger now. It makes hell of a difference because there's hardly any friction now. Before you've got the whole surface of your board, your sled, touching your table saw. Now there's only two very fine runners actually touching the table saw. Uh, it might be of some use to somebody. It's just a little experiment which seemed to work. So uh, I'm going to carry on gluing up now and I'll see you later. Uh, back again. A little tip. Um, if you find when you've cut all your segments out and there is a discrepancy in your angle but not too much you can still clamp it up but you uh, do it in two halves basically so you get yourself two little pieces of scrap wood five segments there five segments there put the little bit of scrap wood there and there then you can put your glue on and your hose clamps tighten it up when it's set you end up with two halves which you can easily sand perfectly square on your sanding disc then you can glue the two halves together uh, it works if you're slightly out if it's, a, if it's a great wedge out you know you're in trouble you should reset your saw okay Well, that's the outside roughly done, needs a bit of a finish off yet. Uh, now to tackle the inside, which is um, a bit daunting if you've never done it before. Uh, I'm certainly having second thoughts about it, but I've tried a couple of the tools out. I'm very limited on my tool set at the moment. I'll, I'll keep adding to it as time goes by. But uh, off, the best one I've found so far is going with the parting tool to just round it all up. And uh, that seems to be working on the first ring anyway, so I'll take it a bit further in and see if I can get some sort of uh, shape on the inside. I've managed to get, <coughs> excuse me, I've managed to get in there, that's not too bad, uh, a few little ridges on it so I'll try and get in there with a the scraper now and do some very fine scrapings in there, not too much pressure and we'll see how it goes. feels a bit better in fact that feels a lot better I left the walls really quite thick on this um, I was going to leave it pretty straight sided but there's enough thickness there to put maybe just a little bit of shape on it um, so I'm going to have a go anyway and uh, if it doesn't work it's only a bit of wood it will put it it will keep the fire going won't it so I'll just set up and I'll get back to you later 
Treat. Want a little bit more work on the, the, the foot of the bowl, but uh, not too much. I'll get on with that now. Right, I'm going to take a bit more off the inside now and um, then I'll get on and hopefully sand it if it still holds together. had two coats of sand in sealant now and uh, just going to give it its first coat of wax
one more coat should do it and I'll get back to you in a bit all right that's all finished uh, you might notice I've made myself a, a set of bowl jaws or bowl reversing jaws I think they're called cold jaws whatever um, just out of some half inch ply and I've got these door bumpers you usually screw them on the skirting board to stop your door banging against the wall but uh, they're slightly shaped which is ideal for gripping a bowl um, that's it basically it, it seems to grip it in quite well uh, keep the speed down low I've just got to take the tenon off and then give the base a bit of a polish so we'll see how it goes in the penny. Well, they seem to work all right so we're uh, quite pleased with those actually saved me about uh, 60 quid all this lot cost about 10 pound I already had the plywood but a set of jewels for this Axminster chuck cost about 70 odd pound so uh, it's something that probably won't get used too often so uh, it's ideal I'll just sand this down now and uh, show you the finished article well there it is the finished little bowl I'm quite pleased with how it's come out from my very first attempt at uh, segmented turning getting a bit closer you can see the the foot on it the grain on the segment show up really well and uh, that's it yeah that'll do for me very first attempt very pleased I think I'll keep it well that's it um, I hope you enjoyed it I certainly did it's uh, been quite an experiment doing something segmented I'll definitely have a go with something else uh, maybe try putting a bit of a pattern on start getting a bit more intricate but there's so much with this wood turning you don't know what bit to do next do I do a segmented do I try a goblet or oh, there's so much to, to learn and uh, I'm really enjoying it uh, thanks ever such a lot to all your subscribers all your comments I really am grateful I know this face doesn't look grateful but it really is believe me um, that's it please subscribe uh, if you like what you see pass it on if you don't like what you see please let me know I can only learn from these things and uh, I'll see you next time with something new bye now